हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी चैप्टर वन क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट टेकन फ्रॉम क्लास एट सब्जेक्ट साइंस वी विल रीड दिस चैप्टर एंड इन द एंड वी विल डू द क्वेश्चन आंसर्स स्टेट ट्यू पहेली एंड बूजो वेंट टू देयर अंकल्स हाउस ड्यूरिंग द समर वैकेशन देयर अंकल इज अ फार्मर वन डे दे सॉ सम टूल्स लाइक खुरपी सिकल शॉवल प्लग एक्सेट्रा इन द फील्ड आई वॉन्ट टू नो where and how we use these tools you have learned that all living organisms require food plants can make their food themselves can you recall how green plants synthesize their own food animals including humans cannot make their own food so where do animals get their food from but first of all why do we have to eat food you already know that energy from the food is utilized by organisms for carrying out their various body functions such as digestion respiration and excretion we get our food from plants or animals or both since we all need food how can we provide food to a large number of people in our country food has to be produced on a large scale in order to provide food for a large population regular production proper management and distribution is necessary 1.1 agricultural practices till 10000 bce people were nomadic they were wandering in groups from place to place in search of food and shelter they ate raw fruits and vegetables and started hunting animals for food later they could cultivate land and produce rice wheat and other food crops thus was born agriculture when plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large scale it is called a crop for example crop of wheat means that all the plants grown in a field are that of wheat You already know that crops are of different types like cereals, vegetables and fruits. These can be classified on the basis of the season in which they grow. India is a vast country. The climatic conditions like temperature, humidity and rainfall vary from one region to another. Accordingly, there is a rich variety of crops grown in different parts of the country. Despite this diversity, two broad cropping patterns can be identified. These are first kharif crops The crops which are sown in the rainy season are called kharif crops. The rainy season in India is generally from June to September. Paddy, maize, soya bean, groundnut and cotton are kharif crops. Second, rabi crops. The crops grown in the winter season October to March are called rabi crops. Example of rabi crops are wheat, gram, pea, mustard and linseed. Besides these pulses and vegetables are grown during summer at many places 1.2 basic practices of crop production why paddy cannot be grown in the winter season paddy requires a lot of water therefore it is grown only in the rainy season cultivation of crops involves several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time you may find that these activities are similar to those carried out by a gardener or even by you when you grow ornamental plants in your house These activities or tasks are referred to as agricultural practices which are listed below. First, preparation of soil. Second, sowing. Third, adding manure and fertilizers. Fourth, irrigation. Fifth, protecting from weeds. Sixth, harvesting. Seventh, storage. 1.3 Preparation of soil. The preparation of soil is the first step before growing a crop. One of the most important tasks in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it. This allows the root to penetrate deep into the soil. The loose soil allows the roots to breathe easily even when they go deep into the soil. Why does the loosening of soil allow the roots to breathe easily? The loosened soil helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil. These organisms are friends of the farmer since they further turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it. But why the soil needs to be turned and loosened? You have learned in the previous classes that Soil contains minerals, water, air and some living organisms. In addition, dead plants and animals get decomposed by soil organisms. In this way, various nutrients in the dead organisms are released back into the soil. These nutrients are again absorbed by plants. Since only a few centimeters of the top layer of the soil supports plant growth, turning and loosening of soil brings the nutrient-rich soil to the top so that plants can use these nutrients. Thus, Turning and loosening of soil is very important for cultivation of crops. The process of loosening and turning of the soil is called tilling and plucking.
This is done by using a plug. Plugs are made of wood or iron. If the soil is very dry, it may need watering before plucking. The plugged field may have big clumps of soil called crumbs. It is necessary to break these crumbs. Leveling the field is beneficial for sowing as well as for irrigation. Leveling of soil is done with the help of a leveler. Sometimes manure is added to the soil before tilling. This helps in proper mixing of manure with soil. The soil is moistened before sowing. Agricultural implements. Before sowing the seeds, it is necessary to break soil clumps to get better yield. This is done with the help of various tools. The main tools used for this purpose are the plug, hoe and cultivator. Figure 1.1a, the plug. This is the beam. This is plug shaft like this one. And this which goes into the ground is called plug share. Plug. This is being used since ancient times for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop removing the weeds and turning the soil. This is made of wood and is drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals, horses and camels. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plug share. The main part of the plug is a long log of wood which is called a plug shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft. The other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's neck. One pair of bulls and a man can easily operate the plug. Figure 1.1a as we have seen earlier. The indigenous wooden plug is increasingly being replaced by iron plugs nowadays. Ho, oh, it is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron. A strong, broad and bent plate of the iron is fixed to one of its ends and works like a blade. It is pulled by animals. Figure 1.1b, a ho, this is grip, handle, bent plate, rod, beam. Cultivator. Nowadays, plucking is done by tractor-driven cultivator. The use of cultivator saves labor and time. Figure 1.1c. Cultivator driven by a tractor. As you can see in the figure. 1.4. Sowing. Sowing is an important part of crop production. Before sowing, good quality, clean and healthy seeds of a good variety are selected. Farmers prefer to use seeds which give high yield. Selection of seeds. One day, I saw my mother put some gram seeds in a vessel and pour some water on them. After a few minutes, some seeds started to float on top. I wonder why some seeds float on water. Activity 1.1 Take a beaker and fill half of it with water. Put a handful of wheat seeds and stir well. Wait for some time. Are there seeds which float on water? Would those be lighter or heavier than those which sink? Why would they be lighter? Answer: We observe that most of the seeds sink while some float on water. Damaged seeds become hollow and lighter so they float. In this way, we can separate damaged seeds from the healthier ones. Damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter. Therefore, they float on water. This is a good method for separating good, healthy seeds from the damaged ones. Before sowing, one of the important tasks is to know about the tools used for sowing seeds. Figure 1.2a and b. Traditional tool. The tool used traditionally for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel. Figure 1.2a. The seeds are filled into the funnel, passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends. These ends pierce into the soil and place seeds there. Figure 1.2a. Traditional method of sowing. Figure 1.2b. A seed drill. Seed drill. Nowadays, the seed drill, figure 1.2b, is used for sowing with the help of tractors. This sows the seeds uniformly at equal distance and depth. It ensures that seeds get covered by the soil after sowing. This protects seeds from being eaten by birds. Sowing by using a seed drill saves time and labor. There is a nursery near my school. I found that little plants were kept in small bags. Why are they kept like this? Seeds of a few plants such as paddy are first grown in a nursery. When they grow into seedlings, they are transplanted to the field manually. Some forest plants and flowering plants are also grown in the nursery. Appropriate distance between seeds is necessary to avoid overcrowding of plants. This allows plants to get sufficient sunlight, nutrients and water from the soil. At times, a few plants may have to be removed to prevent overcrowding. 1.5 adding manure and fertilizers. 
the substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manure and fertilizers. I saw a healthy crop growing in a farm. In the neighboring farm, the plants were weak. Why do some plants grow better than others? Soil supplies mineral nutrients to the crop plants. These nutrients are essential for the growth of plants. In certain areas, farmers grow crop after crop in the same field. The field is never left uncultivated or fallow. Imagine what happens to the nutrients. Continuous cultivation of crops makes the soil poor in nutrients. Therefore, farmers have to add manure to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients. This process is called manuring. Improper or insufficient manuring results in weak plants. Manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal waste. Farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose. The decomposition is caused by some microorganisms. The decomposed matter is used as organic manure. You have already learnt about vermicomposting in class 6. Activity 1.2 Take moong or gram seeds and germinate them. Select three equal sized seedlings. Take three empty glasses or similar vessels. Mark them A, B and C. To glass A, add little amount of soil mixed with a little cow dung manure. In glass B, put the same amount of soil mixed with a little urea. Take the same amount of soil in glass C without adding anything. Figure 1.3a Preparation of the experiment Now pour the same amount of water in each glass and plant the seedlings in them. Keep them in a safe place and water them daily. After 7 to 10 days, observe their growth. Figure 1.3b Growing seedlings with manure and fertilizer A, B and C Did plants in all glasses grow at the same pace? Which glass showed better growth of plants? In which glass was the growth fastest? Answer After 7 to 10 days, we observed that the growth was fastest in glass B followed by glass A. Glass C showed minimum growth. Fertilizers are chemicals which are rich in a particular nutrient. How are they different from manure? Fertilizers are produced in factories. Some examples of fertilizers are urea, ammonium sulphate, superphosphate, potash, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The use of fertilizers has helped farmers to get better yield of crops such as wheat, paddy and maize. But excessive use of fertilizers has made the soil less fertile. Fertilizers have also become a source of water pollution. Therefore, in order to maintain the fertility of the soil, we have to substitute fertilizers with organic manure or leave the field uncultivated fallow in between two crops. The use of manure improves soil texture as well as its water retaining capacity. It replenishes the soil with nutrients. Another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients is through crop rotation. This can be done by growing different crops alternately. Earlier, farmers in northern India used to grow legumes as fodder in one season and wheat in the next season. This helped in the replenishment of the soil with nitrogen. Farmers are being encouraged to adopt this practice. In the previous classes, you have learnt about rhizobium bacteria. These are present in the nodules of roots of leguminous plants. They fix an atmospheric nitrogen. Table 1.1 Differences between Fertilizer and Manure First, Fertilizer Fertilizer is a man-made inorganic salt. Manure is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung and plant residues. Second, Fertilizer is prepared in factories. Manure can be prepared in the fields. Third, Fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil. Manure provides a lot of humus to the soil. Fourth, fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Manure is relatively less rich in plant nutrients. Table 1.1 gives the differences between a fertilizer and manure. Advantages of manure The organic manure is considered better than fertilizers. This is because it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil. It makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases becomes easy. It increases the number of friendly microbes. 
it improves the texture of the soil. 1.6 irrigation all living beings need to all living beings need water to live water is important for proper growth and development water is absorbed by the plant roots along with water minerals and fertilizers are also absorbed plants contain nearly 90% water water is essential because germination of seeds does not take place under dry conditions nutrients dissolved in water are transported to each part of the plant Water also protects the crop from both frost and hot air currents. To maintain the moisture of the soil for healthy crop growth, fields have to be watered regularly. The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. The time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop, soil to soil and season to season. In summer, the frequency of watering is higher. Why is it so? could it be due to the increased rate of evaporation of water from the soil and the leaves i am very careful this year about watering the plants last summer my plants dried up and died sources of irrigation the sources of water for irrigation are wells tube wells ponds lakes rivers dams and canals traditional methods of irrigation The water available in wells, lakes and canals is lifted up by different methods in different regions for taking it to the fields. Cattle or human labor is used in these methods. So, these methods are cheaper but less efficient. The various traditional ways are first, moat, pulley system as shown in figure 1.4a, second, chain pump as shown in figure 1.4b, third, dekli as shown in figure 1.4c rahat lever system as shown in figure 1.4d pumps are commonly used for lifting water diesel biogas electricity and solar energy is used to run these pumps modern methods of irrigation modern methods of irrigation helps us to use water economically the main methods used are as follows first sprinkler system this system is more useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available the perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals when water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump it escapes from the rotating nozzles figure 1.5a sprinkler system it gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining sprinkler is very useful for lawns coffee plantation and several other crops figure 1.5 a second drip system in this system the water falls drop by drop directly near the roots so it is called drip system it is the best technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees figure 1.5 b as shown in the figure water is not wasted at all it is a boon in regions where availability of water is poor 1.7 protection from weeds Bujo and Pahili went to a nearby wheat field and saw that there were some other plants in the field growing along with wheat plants have these other plants been planted purposely in a field many other undesirable plants may grow naturally along with the crop these undesirable plants are called weeds the removal of weeds is called weeding weeding is necessary since weeds compete with the crop plants for water nutrients space and light thus they affect the growth of the crop some weeds interfere even in harvesting and may be poisonous for animals and human beings farmers adopt many ways to remove weeds and control their growth tilling before sowing of crops helps in uprooting and killing of weeds which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil the best time for the removal of weeds is before they produce flowers and seeds the manual removal includes physical removal of weeds by uprooting or cutting them close to the ground from time to time this is done with the help of a khurpi a seed drill figure 1.2b is also used to uproot weeds weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called weedicides like 2,4-D these are sprayed in the field to kill the weeds they do not damage the crops The weedicides are diluted with water to the extent required and sprayed in the fields with the sprayer. Figure 1.6. Figure 1.6. As you can see, the farmer is spraying weedicide. Do weedicides have any effect on the person handling the weedicide sprayer? 
As already mentioned, the weedicides are spread during the vegetative growth of weeds before flowering and seed formation. Spraying of weedicides may affect the health of farmers, so they should use these chemicals very carefully. They should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during spraying of these chemicals. 1.8 Harvesting Harvesting of a crop is an important task. The cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting. In harvesting, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. It usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crop to mature. Harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle figure 1.7 or by a machine called harvester. In the harvested crop, the grain seeds need to be separated from the shaft. This process is called threshing. This is carried out with the help of a machine called combine which is in fact a harvester as well as a thresher. Figure 1.8 Combine After harvesting, sometimes stubs are left in the field, which are burnt by farmers. Paheli is worried. She knows that it causes pollution. It may also catch fire and damage the crops lying in the fields. Farmers with small holdings of land do the separation of grain and shaft by winnowing. Figure 1.9 You have already studied this in class 6. Winnowing machine Harvest festivals after three or four months of hard work, there comes the day of the harvest. The sight of golden fields of standing crop, laden with grain, fills the hearts of farmers with joy and a sense of well-being. The efforts of the past season have borne fruit and it is time to relax and enjoy a little. The period of harvest is thus of great joy and happiness in all parts of India. Men and women celebrate it with great enthusiasm. Special festivals associated with the harvest season are Pongal, Paisakhi, Holi, Diwali, Nabanya, and Bihu. 1.9 Storage Storage of produce is an important task. If the harvested grains are to be kept for longer time, they should be safe from moisture, insects, rats, and microorganisms. Harvested grains have more moisture. If freshly harvested grains, that is seeds, are stored without drying, they may get spoilt or attacked by organisms, making them unfit for use or for germination. Hence, before storing them, the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them. This prevents the attack by insect pests, bacteria and fungi. I saw my mother putting some dried neem leaves in an iron drum containing wheat. I wonder why. Figure 1.10a Silos for storage of grains Figure 1.10b Storage of grains in gunny bags in granaries Farmers store grains in jute bags or metallic bins. However, large-scale storage of grains is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects. Figure 1.10a and b as we have seen earlier. Dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at home. For storing large quantities of grain in big go-downs, Specific chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms. 1.10 Food from Animals Activity 1.3 Make the following table in your notebook and complete it. Food, Milk, Sources, Cow, Buffalo, She Goat, She Camel. Second, Meat, Goat, Hen, Pig, Duck, Sheep. Third, Egg, Hen, Duck, Goose. Fourth, Honey. Honey bee. After completing this table, you must have seen that, like plants, animals also provide us with different kinds of food. Many people living in the coastal areas consume fish as a major part of their diet. In the previous classes, you have learnt about the food that we obtain from plants. We have just seen that the process of crop production involves a number of steps like selection of seeds, sowing, etc. Similarly, animals reared at home or in farms have to be provided with proper food, shelter and care. When this is done on a large scale, it is called animal husbandry. Fish is good for health. We get cod liver oil from fish which is rich in vitamin D. What you have learnt? In order to provide food to our growing population, we need to adopt certain agricultural practices. Same kind of plants cultivated at a place constitute a crop. In India, crops can be broadly categorized into two types based on seasons, rabi and kharif crops. It is necessary to prepare soil by tilling and leveling. Plugs and levelers are used for this purpose. Sowing of seeds at appropriate depths 
and distances gives good yield. Good variety of seeds are sown after selection of healthy seeds. Sowing is done by seed drills. Soil needs replenishment and enrichment through the use of organic manure and fertilizers. Use of chemical fertilizers has increased tremendously with the introduction of new crop varieties. Supply of water to crops at appropriate intervals is called irrigation. Weeding involves removal of unwanted and uncultivated plants called weeds. Harvesting is the cutting of the mature crop manually or by machines. Separation of the grains from the shaft is called threshing. Proper storage of grains is necessary to protect them from pests and microorganisms. Food is also obtained from animals for which animals are reared. This is called animal husbandry. Friends, we have completed the chapter. Now let's do the question answers exercises. Question 1. Select the correct word from the following list and fill in the blanks. A. The same kind of plants grown and cultivated on a large scale at a place is called crop. B. The first step before growing crops is preparation of the soil. C. Damaged seeds would float on top of water. D. For growing a crop, sufficient sunlight and water and nutrients from the soil are essential. Second, match items in column A with those in column B. First, Kharif crops, paddy and maize. Second, Rabi crops, wheat, gram, pea. Third, chemical fertilizers, urea and superphosphate. Fourth, organic manure, animal excreta, cow dung, urine and plant waste. Question 3. Give two examples of each. A. Kharif crop. Answer. Kharif crops, paddy and maize. Rabi crops, wheat and pea. Question 4. Write a paragraph in your own words on each of the following. A. Preparation of soil. Answer. Preparation of the soil is the first step in agriculture. Preparation of the soil is done to loosen the soil, which is essential for root penetration into the soil. This allows the roots to breathe easily. Loosening of the soil allows the growth of earthworms and microorganisms, which will help to keep the soil fertile by adding humus to the soil. Loosening of soil also brings nutrient-rich soil to the top layer, which is essential for the growth of plants. B. Sowing Sowing is an important process in crop production. First, healthy seeds are selected before sowing. After selecting healthy seeds, sowing is done by either traditional methods or by using the equipment seed drill. C. Weeding Removal of unnecessary plants from the field is called weeding. Weeds compete with crop plants for nutrients and water. This will reduce the yield of the desired crops. Weeds also interfere while harvesting and get mixed with crops. Some weeds are poisonous to animals and humans. Tilling is a common method that helps remove weeds before sowing crops. And manual methods like the physical removal of plants are also used to remove weeds. Weedicides are sprayed to get rid of weeds. But this method may affect the health of farmers because of the chemicals used as weedicides. D. Threshing Process of separating the shaft from the crop is known as threshing. Threshing is carried by a machine called combine, which is a harvester as well as a thresher. Threshing is also done by winnowing, where the blow of air is used to separate the shaft from crops. Question 5. Explain how fertilizers are different from manure. Answer. Fertilizer is an inorganic substance. Manure is an organic substance. Fertilizers are prepared artificially. Manure is obtained by the decomposition of animal, plant and human waste. Prepared in factories, prepared in fields. Fertilizers does not provide humus to the soil. Manure provides humus to the soil. Fertilizers rich in plant nutrients. Manure relatively less plant nutrients. Fertilizers long term usage has adverse effects on soil. Manure long term usage improves soil fertility. Question 6. What is irrigation? Describe two methods of irrigation which conserve water. Answer. The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. Methods of irrigation which conserve water are as follows. A. Drip irrigation. Here the water goes drop by drop directly into the roots. This method is very useful as it conserves the water and also helps in avoiding weeds. B. Sprinkler system. This method is in use mainly in uneven land where sufficient water is not available. The perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals. When water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure, 
with the help of a pump it escapes from the rotating nozzles it gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining question 7 if wheat is sown in the kharif season what would happen discuss answer wheat crops may get destroyed if sown in the kharif season because of unfavorable temperatures pests and adaptable conditions for the plants to grow kharif comes during the rainy season hence it is not a wise idea to grow wheat in the kharif season question 8 explain how soil gets affected by the continuous plantation of crops in a field answer plants require nutrients for their growth without optimum nutrients plants will die continuous plantation of crops results in the depletion of certain nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus potassium etc this results in a decrease in yield due to loss of nutrients hence there should be a gap between crops in order to get a good yield question 9 what are weeds how can we control them answer in a field many other undesirable plants may grow naturally along with the crop these undesirable plants are called weeds weeds can be controlled by methods called weeding tilling before sowing the crops helps in uprooting and killing weeds which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called weedicides question 10 arrange the following boxes in proper order to make a flow chart of sugar cane crop production answer preparation of soil plucking the field sowing manuring irrigation harvesting sending crop to sugar factory flow chart of sugar cane crop production question 11 complete the following word puzzle with the help of clues given below down first providing water to the crops irrigation Second, keeping crop grains for a long time under proper conditions. Storage. Certain plants of the same kind grown on a large scale crop. Across. A machine used for cutting the matured crop. Harvester. A rubby crop that is also one of the pulses. Gram. A process of separating the grain from sharp. Winnowing. As you can see on the screen, I have solved the puzzle for you. Irrigation. Storage and crop. 1, 2, 5 and across third harvester 4 gram 6 winnowing friends in this video we have read the chapter and also did all the question answers from the chapter if you like the video kindly share it with your friends in case you have not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon so that new video notifications could reach you we'll meet in the next video till then take care and respect your elders i am webhav signing off thank you for watching